My name is Big Alaceves. I'm the director of the River's Edge Ranch. I'm also a chaplain. Uh, I was a founder, one of the co-founders of the Mongo Nation. I also was an advocate in the 70s, early 70s in the colleges. I closed down some of the colleges, um, things like that. I bombed some safe ways for the, the great and I also, uh, they said I tried to burn Ronald Reagan alive. I'm a paratrooper. Uh, General Westmoreland decorated me. I killed with my hands. And I worked for a lot of families on the other side of the border. And that's what I've done. That's what God has brought me from. And that's why I'm here today to testify. About 30 seconds. Uh, I came to Jesus, um, we were living with some people, we had moved, and they taught me the Bible, and I accepted the Lord. Well, I knew Kilroy at first only by uh, listening to people talk. They would uh, tell stories about him. I used to live right there in Second and Arena, and... Uh, that's the neighborhood of the White Fence gang. They control all that area. And you would hear things, what he did, you know, what he did to people. He was a vicious man. You could say, kill when you would know he was around, you would always watch your back. If you did anything wrong or not, you'd watch your back. Because when he comes around, something was going to happen. And it wasn't going to be good. Not, nothing good at all. He was famous for that. He'd done a lot of things to a lot of people. And I can't tell you about his organization because I know nothing about that. But the stories I've heard, he was a vicious man in prison. And when he got out, he was vicious. I know his mother, Rose, she's a very good friend of mine. His brother, Danny, was my prime partner for a while. And I loved his family. I met Roy when he came out of prison the last time. Uh, I, I remember I was at his mother's house, and uh, he needed a ride. He's a pitcher. He plays uh, baseball. And I was there waiting for his brother. And then his mother, Rose, said, oh, I will give you a ride. <laughs> so I had to give him a ride. And all the way down to that park, I just like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Because I, I know a lot of people. He's done a lot of bad things to him. That's how I know him. And then after that, they told me that he was saved. And naturally, when I'm sure when they told people I was saved, nobody believed it, you know, the rumors. And then they said he was saved. And then you would hear all these rumors that he's um, giving Bible studies in garages and the police are raiding them because the people that are going in there are gangsters that are going to Jesus because of him. You know, they would raid them and, what are you doing? They'd show them the Bibles and they didn't care. They would still treat him like he was a common criminal, which he was a criminal at one time, but that's not who he is now. I've been in San Quentin, I believe, uh, Folsom with him. He goes in there and gives his testimony. I do also. And, and people just flock around them like, are you for real? And they tell him things that they don't tell other people because they know who he is. You know, his name carries a lot of weight. In prison, out of prison, people know who he is. Because once he, when he was in his organization, he was 100% in there. And whatever he had to do to keep going, he did it. Whatever he had to do. And now he's a Christian, a man of God, a great man of God. Whatever he has to do in Christ, he does it. He goes and speaks. You can call him any time and he'll stay and listen to you. He doesn't care. He's a man of God, 110%. I'm fortunate that he asked me to give this little talk, you know, that I knew him. I knew what he was, but I know who he is now. And it's a total turnover. Christ has lifted him up and changed his whole life. All the evil that he would do, 
now he's doing good. All the pain and suffering he would inflict on people, now it's love and respect. And only through the hands of Jesus Christ who saved this man. Okay. Yeah, it was because men were faithful. And they looked at us through the eyes of Christ. They didn't look at us who we were at that time. They knew that God could use us and they were faithful. And they brought us along just like you do a child, slowly but surely. And God and only God has changed our lives. You know, we, we could say a lot of things. We could say a lot of things, but all we do say is, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for changing our lives. You know, I, I, I don't believe I was ready to change. I don't believe that, that I could change because I would try to change. I never could, but Christ knew. And he just brought me along. Just brought me along like, like you would your own baby. And you know, a lot of people, they, they have problems. They have problems drinking, drugs, they beat their wives, they're gangsters, they rob. All those things was a part of our lives. But God, God took us from that. And if you have that problem, I'm here to tell you that God can change your life as he did ours. He can change, no matter what anybody says, people say, oh, Big Al, ah, he's not saved. Or they say about Roy, oh man, once in the mafia, always in the mafia, all those things. But see, they don't know Christ like we do. They don't know that he can change your life. They don't know how much he really loves you. And all you gotta do is ask, and he'll come into your heart, into your life. No, I, no, wait, I, hold on, wait, go, go ahead. I, I, I'll tell you one story that I know of him. I remember the police got him. He was in a car. The police got him and took him. So naturally, the police impound the car, and they take it to the impound. When you go to the impound, you know, the people there, they're going to search it, right? So when they opened the hood, a guy jumped out of the, out of the trunk. I mean, he jumped out of the trunk, and he ran as fast as he could. Nobody knows who he is or where he was going, but he was running fast. That's what I know about that guy. I remember one time we were going to San Quentin. I was sitting in the back seat. It was Black Dan in the front seat and Kilroy. And they were talking over old times. Remember this guy, what he did. Remember what we did to them and all that. And, I, you know, you can't help but listen. And then all of a sudden I say, hey, well, where was this? And they both turn around. Oh, now you're burglarizing our conversation. Mind your own business. And they all start laughing. And for a second. I felt like I stepped out of line, but it really wasn't that because they were waiting for me to say something so they could laugh at me. They have that joy of the Christ in their lives, in their heart. They got joy. I remember one time we were in right here, they were going into Chino and uh, I saw Roy and Roy was telling me, I was telling him, hey Roy, we're going to go over here and that. And Roy told me, whatever it is, I'll just tell them that Jesus saved you. You don't have to worry about what you say. Just tell them. You know, my favorite scripture is Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall be continuously in my mouth. You know, I praise God for Roy, for what he's doing. No matter what, he doesn't quit. We're going through a season after season praising God. And I thank God that I had the opportunity today to speak on his behalf. Okay? Well, I believe, I believe in all my heart that he had such fame in his organization, such fame. I mean, people would shudder when they would hear his name. They were afraid that he might be there to rob them or kill them or whatever. But now, when he passes, he's gonna, his legacy is what the power of God can do. What the power of God can do, even for people like us. That's what his legacy is going to be. People are going to remember him, yes, from the organization. 
but more from Christ. More what Christ changed his life from before what he was to now what he is. That's his legacy. Jesus Christ is his legacy, has changed his life. Yeah. Well, you got to remember, they have respect. They respect the man, the man of God. Right? You go through some things. Don't, I mean, there's people that will say things, but um, everybody that knows you knows who you really are or were. They respect you. They respect Roy. You know, I know a lot of people, they just, excuse me, they're at all for the things he's doing in Christ. And as for me, I travel all over. I've been to India. I've been all over. And they know one thing, that I'm for reals, that I don't quit. Our main thing is Jesus Christ. We're, we're on a mission, and when our number's up or when we're called for glory, that's when it's going to end. And when it ends, you know, I like to say this. My mother, one of the greatest things I can say, my mother has seen me sober. Just like Rose, Kilroy's mother, she's seen him sober. You know, she doesn't see him with a gun in his back pocket. Or, you know, that's the greatest thing that God did for me, that my family seen me a sober man. And I thank God for that. Many of us have believed the lie of the devil. And we live like that. Many of us. If you're out there an alcoholic, a drug addict, a gangster, whatever you are, God can change that. All you have to do is let him. Don't try to do it. Let God do it. I know because he's done it for me. And if you're out there and you're hearing this, I don't care if you ride a bike. I don't care if you're in a truck. I don't care if you're taking the bus. God is calling you by your name. Whether you answer or not is up to you. I know what he can do if you answer because I'm a living testimony to that. And I'm sure Roy would say the same thing. Just ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to forgive you your sins. And he will.